But the important thing is to understand that we, if we cooperate with grace, grace can do everything through us. Finally, it's all grace. We don't do anything. But on the other hand, if the sun is shining on the side of a building and the curtains are drawn shut in your room, your room will be in darkness, even though the sun is outside. Your job is to separate the curtains. And that means to do those things which you cooperate with grace. Love God, be kind to your neighbor, help other people, and so on. But do well. God asks you to do well whatever you do. The meek is not the hangdog person. The meek person is somebody who says, I'm not doing it. He is doing it. So Yogananda came to teach us great things. You know, in the scriptures in India. They say that God comes in the Bhagavad Gita. It says, I incarnate myself on this planet. Whenever there's a great need, whenever virtue is in the decline and evil is on the rise, I come back again and again. And God has come back many times into this world. You cannot say, and I will never say, Yogananda is greater than any other great prophet. They're all one in him. God has different messages to send through different prophets. But I'm not going to be that kind of person who tries to convert you by saying, my way is the best. It's not the best. The one person I want to convert you to is your own higher self. And with this teaching, however, I can say that in our time, in our age, Yogananda came to bring the teaching that is needed today. That teaching today is the need to understand that there is a God bes bes despite materialistic science, despite the um, belief of everybody that there isn't a God, that all values are relative, that uh, um, y nothing is good or bad, it's all relative and depending on, it's all subjective, and uh, so on. He came to show answers to every one of the modern problems of philosophy, to show how there is meaning in life, how that meaning is an exalted meaning, and it's not exalted because somebody tells you it's exalted. What makes it exalted is that if you live right, you yourself will get what you yourself want from life. Why did he say, it is more blessed to give than to receive? More blessed means more blissful. If I, if I think in terms of what I can take from people, I get a certain amount of pleasure, but it's a limited one. If I can learn to give to people, there's a certain freedom in it. If I try to amass wealth and amass property and amass things, then I'm always worried about those things. Who's going to take it? Who will hurt, damage it? Don't let people get too close to it. All the sorts of worries that you get when you think in terms of possession, when you think in terms of sharing, there's such bliss that comes in it. And then you understand that you will be happier the more you give to people. And then you understand more that it's not a matter of giving things, it's a matter of giving bliss, love, consciousness. And the more you can do that with people, the happier you are. So that when you see a complete stranger in the streets, Master used to say, shoot him if you see w sadness in his eyes. Shoot him with the buckshot of your smiles. <laughs> What a lovely expression. <laughs> <laughs> I found that sometimes I, I, I will smile at strangers. They must think I'm completely goofy. <laughs> but sometimes they react. I remember, I've told many of you this story before. Of one time I, I went, I was in Paris, and uh, I saw advertised a concert, and I very much wanted to go to this concert. It happened to be, it would be my birthday today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I went there just in time to see them closing their doors. And I 
shouted out, but it's my birthday. <laughs> and uh, in French, of course. <laughs> and and uh, they said, oh, happy birthday. And they invited me in. <laughs> and because the hall was full, I had to sit on the behind the altar. It was in a church. And later on the metro, this old woman came to me. Mm. And she said, do you remember me? I said, well, no. She said, but I was in the audience tonight. Oh. And oh. how I could have thought, how she could have thought that I would know her out of 700 people. But it was that feeling of communion with me. Mm. When you feel that, people feel that they're your friend. Mm. She's, she sat down next to me and told me about problems she was having with her daughter and so on. The sort of things you confide in your friends, but not to strangers. When you have this, you really feel that everybody is your own. Well, this is what Master taught us. And with his teaching, he helped us to understand that God is something to love. He's infinitely lovable, and he's lovable in everybody. And our goal, finally, is not to just be abject before him, but to say, I am yours, and to become he. So this teaching I have seen because my life has been dedicated to spreading his teachings and to making them known in the world. I have seen how they, they can change all of society. Marriage, for example. He showed how marriage should not be just passion. It should be based on respect, mutual respect. There's always a certain amount of distance in respect. And when you have that, there can always be love. But if you lose the respect, then you lose the love. So the basis of marriage should be respect. He taught education for higher ideals, and I wrote that in my book, Education for Life. I wrote on how to, uh, how to through marriage to find a higher way of life. He wrote about business, that business should not be only for taking, we should share with people. And in fact, it's perfectly good sense, and he said this, if you live in a town with 999, uh, with a thousand people, you'll, if you're competitive, you'll have 999 enemies. If you're cooperative and friendly, you'll have 999 friends. Doesn't it make sense? And so he taught that this cutthroat business methods of America are wrong. They are what will bring a great de depression, they are bringing it right now. The, I, I know that there are these protests on Wall Street and Zuccotti Park and in many cities throughout the world against the ruthless and cutthroat uh, stockbrokers and businessmen and so on. Well, it's the culture, it's not those people's fault. If the protesters could have money, they would be exactly the same. We've got to get away from the consciousness of greed, from the consciousness of thinking that I get more if I hold and take, instead of sharing and cooperating. So in that too, he showed us a new way of life which will change this world. He really was the avatar for this new age, ushering in Dwapara Yuga. I believe it with all my heart. He came also to show how in the arts, we need to give arts that are uplifting. The arts, after the 19th century, people got into this, this understanding that everything is relative in, in certain ways, in motion and so on. They began to think values are relative. And so the arts have no values in them anymore. You have just ridiculous expressions, it cult sculpture with gears and so on, or pipes. I saw <laughs> so-called sculpture in, on Kauai, where there were all these pipes sort of going around, and I said, what on earth is that? <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, why, that's art. <laughs> well, art should, it should touch your heart, not just your mind. And that did not touch my heart. <laughs> Except with disgust. <laughs> Why can't art, you know, I've found one thing about art. 
You can paint a tree, you can paint it beautifully. You can paint a forest, you can paint it beautifully. But a tree is not something conscious. The highest form of evolution on this plane, on this earth plane, is human beings. And you look at some, un hum some human beings and you wonder. <laughs> but basically, yes, it's true. <laughs> Basically, yes, it's true, because everybody has the potential to rid himself of this ego and to know God. And so why can't we have, especially in the arts, showing people of noble countenance, not those Dutch burgers and those paintings that you see <laughs> with a patina that somehow makes them even worse? <laughs> people who show true compassion, they don't show it, usually. Michelangelo did some of it, but it was pretty fierce, wasn't it? I mean, God and uh, behind the altar in the Sistine Chapel, throwing his, bring his arm back to hurl the damnation at these poor sinners. I mean, the poor fellows, let's face it. So, you sin. How can you help it? I mean, everything's against you. God gave you your family. He gave you your environment. He gave you your upbringing. He gave you everything. And then he says, you've got to act right. He f <laughs> he, <laughs> he gave you all the temptation in the world to do wrong, and then he's angry with you if you do wrong. <laughs> I mean, let's face it, the dice are loaded. <laughs> we, by our own discrimination, have to learn this is why reincarnation is an absolutely essential teaching. It takes a long time. It'll take maybe a whole lifetime to overcome even one really bad habit like drinking. So how can you overcome all your bad habits in one lifetime? It's a ridiculous teaching. Once you've gotten into understanding reincarnation, this is no possible alternative. God gave us all these things because we have to do our bit. We have to cooperate with grace, and bit by bit we learn. The mafiosi learns that, yes, he gets revenge, yes, he gets the satisfaction of killing his enemies, but after it all, in the end, he finds everybody's against him. He finds he can't go anywhere safely without a gun in his pocket. He finds that he's not happy in himself, and so he begins gradually to think, maybe I shouldn't do that. Oh, another person may be a great violinist, and he may have been born with that talent. Maybe other lifetimes he was a, in that. He may be in this lifetime such a good violinist that nobody can compete with him. Sooner or later he'll reach the point but of thinking, is this all? And he'll run off to some other f pursuit, maybe engineering or who knows what. But sooner or later, everybody has to learn. The arts are a wonderful way, because what lifts you is not your intellect, not your brain power, not your reasoning. I came to God through reasoning, and it's because I had this desire in my heart for the truth that I came that way and did find the truth. I found that he had to be consciousness. Usually, intellect alone will take you into all kinds of bypaths. Without heart's feeling, without devotion, you can't find God. You can't find happiness. And so the arts are one very important way of helping to lift people through their feelings.